Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I cooked these beautiful parathas, the chives and cream parathas. You can also call them cream and onion paratha. So what I've done, I have taken one medium sized grated potato. And then to this, I have added one bundle of finely chopped chives. You can also use green onions for a sharper flavor. Then a few garlic cloves finely chopped. To this, I have added a good amount of heavy whipping cream. You can use any cream that you have. It should be fresh, it should be thick. And over here, I'm cooking some frozen veggies that I'm going to serve with these parathas. So today was this day when I didn't want to like go outside and shop a lot. So I just used the frozen veggies and I'm making these parathas. So now to this mixture of parathas, I'm adding red chili powder. I'm also going to add some salt and you can add any spice that you like, but I think only the spices that are milder would go with this paratha. So mix everything well so that the juices from the veggies are incorporated well with the cream and check for salt and spices and then we are going to knead the dough. So I'm quickly going to add wheat flour. I've tasted the mixture and it's tasting really good. I've tasted it for salt and it's really reminding me of Lay's cream and onion flavor. Okay, so now you have to knead it. Add um, wheat flour gradually because we don't want to add a lot of water to this. So all the juices from the onions and the cream is going to be the liquid that's going to knead the dough. And if you want, you can add a little bit of milk to this maybe or otherwise you can you know just add wheat flour carefully because if we add water then it's going to dilute the flavors and i don't want that so let me knead and show you this will definitely need a lot of kneading as also the quality of bread has to depend on it so as you can see my dough is kneaded quite well and honestly i haven't added even a little bit of water or any other thing to this the cream and the juices from the veggies were just enough so potatoes when you grate it also leaves its juices so all those things are just enough to knead this dough and now we will keep it aside to rest for a couple of minutes let's say about 10 minutes so that the gluten develops and then we will knead the products make the products I'm going to keep it aside for let's say 10 minutes and then we'll come back and check it. So it's been a couple of minutes and I'm going to check my dough. See? So in order to make it workable, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of wheat flour on the top of this and knead it again gently with this so that it's workable and I can use it to roll the parathas. So you can see how soft this is. The only reason is the cream. Because when you add cream, it becomes extra soft. And the mouth is already watering thinking about its taste. I hope it tastes good and I can share the recipe with you. This recipe I just thought of making like instantly. I don't know. Yeah, so, so the cream has a lot of fat, which makes it soft, which makes it really delicious, because fat makes everything delicious. Absolutely. So I even buy those three that says like, you know, eat good fats. See, eat good fats. And it's from the grass-fed and pasture-raised cows so this is so amazing like this is good for the cows and also for you and also for the farmers who are raising the cows so yeah okay we are done and yeah sprinkle in a little bit more look at this beautiful dough how beautiful 
beautiful this is looking. And now, as usual, let's make parathas with this. Have, see how beautiful this is. It's breaking so easily. It's so soft, it's so moist. And it's smelling just like cream and onions. So those, uh, those white puris and uh, other flatbread options, which are like really soft and white, do those people use milk and cream? I think so. In most of the bakeries, they use butter, they use a lot of cream, they use a lot of saturated fats. So if you're using any of those fresh bakery products, I think you should be good. So here, I'm not going to layer it. Well, I can. Let me layer it actually. <laughs> it's going to taste even better. I'm going to use again my favorite ghee. Wow. And let me take some ghee and just put it on this. Could you please check the sabzi? It's done. And layer it again. little thicker if you roll it very thin it's going to be very crispy and I don't like crispy parathas I like soft parathas so roll it with a little bit of thickness so I can show you see so it's a little bit thick and now we are going to place it on the pan I've been heating it for a while and yeah so it's going to cook and then I will show you how it looks. And here is my frozen veggie that we cooked with jalapenos, olive oil, a little bit of butter, chole masala, and salt and pepper. And it's all good to go. It also had like these chickpeas in it for adding the proteins to the dish. So I think it's going to be good enough for us. And also broccoli has a lot of protein. Yeah. So protein plus fats plus little carbs makes perfect dish. Yeah, good. And meanwhile, I'm going to roll another karata. See, you see these little brown spots in the karata? This is when you need to put ghee or oil, whatever you like. So I think ghee will go better with onion and uh, cream parathas so that's why I'm using ghee otherwise you can use olive oil as well but use some neutral oil don't use like mustard oil or something otherwise I think it's going to spoil the taste or maybe it will give it another beautiful taste I don't know you have to experiment and check for yourself <laughs> but for now I'm adding this beautiful ghee and wow it's cooking really nice I love this spatula, it's so flexy. See? Blah 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 blah. It's my husband's favorite. So I'm just waiting to get it cooked and then I'll serve it to my husband and we'll ask the feedback. See, it's so soft because it has a lot of fats in it. It's really soft and moist. And if you want to make it gluten free, you can just make it right away when you need it. You don't have to wait for the gluten to develop. So it can also be gluten free recipe. It can also be keto friendly recipe because it has a lot of saturated fats. So yeah, you can try like mix batch things and try and experiment. Putting it in real time and as you can see the very first paratha takes the longer to cook but it's very important to cook it very nicely otherwise you won't just get all the flavors you know so this 
see over here it's a little raw still. So you just need to cook it good enough so that all the corners are well done. This side is looking pretty good. Right. This side was a little undercooked so I'm pressing. This is the key to make a good paratha. Just keep pressing on the sides till it's undercooked. And you will get a perfectly cooked beautiful paratha. See, now it's cooked. So I think it's good. Our veggies are also ready. So I'm going to serve it. Tasted for me until honestly <laughs> how good it is. You just use the parana Yeah, you can. That's wow. Really? Yeah. It's good? It's really good. Uh, oh my god. This is what I want. This no. is so soft. Now I want every day this soft for Oh my <laughs> god, this is like the most soft parana I've ever eaten. Oh my god. Now I just want this every day. This was so easy to make. How's the sabji? Really good? Mm. Wow, yay! Thank you so much. Thank I, you. I can get these five parana. Okay, bring it. So delicious food can take away all the stress and I so honestly believe in the power of cooking. I'm so glad that you watched this video. Thank you so much for being here. Please try this recipe and let me know how you like it. And if you like it, and see you in the next vlog. Bye-bye. Take care.